Hi everyone, let's talk about the Frobenius coin problem, otherwise known as the Chicken McNugget Theorem. Let's take a look at an example, because an example is going to illuminate the general idea. Let's say we have coins worth 3 and 7, and infinitely many, infinitely many of them. So what we want to do is that we want to combine threes and sevens and we want to know what is achievable and what is not achievable as combinations of threes and sevens. And this originally comes from a problem where there was a certain number of chicken McNuggets being sold and um, there were two or three denominations. and uh, somebody was wondering what are all the possible achievable combinations and what are non-achievable combinations. So we're just working with 3 and 7 here. The idea is to split it into columns, split the integers into columns. So we get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and we keep going up like this. So we just keep writing uh, rows of the integers with seven columns. We could do this with three columns as well, by the way. It's just a nicer example, as you'll see, with uh, seven columns. So first of all, 3k such that k is an integer, positive, well, non-negative integer, are achievable. So let's, let's uh, circle those. We have 0, we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Okay, and we keep going like this. But the point is, the first 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, the first 7 of them fall into all different columns. So take a look at this diagram and notice that all 7 of the, of the multiples fall in different residue columns modulo 7. And this is going to be true in general. Uh, so for those of you who are inclined to do a general proof, um, use this idea. Um, now what we're going to realize is that if we have let's say 0 and we add 7 then 7 is also achievable and if we add another 7 then above that 14 is also achievable. If we have 9 and we add 7 then 16 is achievable so everything above here is achievable, everything above here is achievable uh, these two are achievable and above that is, is done above this is good this is achievable and above that is good these two are good and above that is good so we're not left with a whole lot of possibilities we're just left with one two four five eight and eleven so these are the only possibilities for non-achievable numbers so all sufficiently large numbers are achievable, which means the num the numbers that are not, not achievable are bounded above. And we don't have to look very far to realize that all of these are not achievable. Um, the reason is that we can look at x and y in 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, Cartesian product with 0, 1, and look at 3x plus 7y. and there, none of them are going to work out to these numbers, and we don't have to look any any further than that, because if this were to be if if we chose four here or two here, then we would get three times four at least plus seven times zero is equal to twelve, which is greater than eleven, which is the highest one here, or we would get um, zero three times zero plus seven times two, which is fourteen, and that's also greater than eleven. So we found all the non-achievable numbers and we've also found all the achievable numbers.
Now the question is how do we generalize this? And I'm not going to prove this because the proof is a bit detailed, but I'll give you the general theorem. The general McNugget theorem. This is otherwise known as, um, I believe it's called uh, Sylvester's theorem. And there's a generalization of this to Schur's theorem, which I'll mention in a moment. So first of all, if M and N are co-prime positive integers, then for Mx plus Ny, where X is greater than or equal to zero, and Y is greater than or equal to zero, um, mn minus m minus n is the highest number, highest non achievable number. So everything, so everything greater than or equal to mn minus m. minus n plus 1 which is equal to m minus 1 n minus 1 is achievable so whatever that number is bigger than this it's achievable so that's the first part of the theorem the second part of the theorem is that the number of non achievable numbers in the non-negative integers is m minus 1 and minus 1 over 2. So so that's uh, the number of non-achievable numbers. And the last thing that I want to mention is, a gen is that there are two possible generalizations to mn non-coprime and to M1, M2, M3, and so on, all the way through MK. So more, more than just two denominations. So this is more denominations. And there are, there are theorems for this. For this particular one, the second one, there's no exact theorem. For the first one, there is a theorem. It's called Schur's theorem. But uh, both are a bit too involved for us to get into right now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.